Hello again, it's uh, Monday afternoon and it's the Monday after the celebrations for the 75th anniversary of VE Day. And I said on Friday that I wanted to have another thought and reflection to share with you, uh, particularly about the importance of marking these occasions, these great occasions in our public life and the way in which I hope, think naturally people gravitate towards religious ceremonies and church buildings. And one of the reasons that I think this happens is because when great events happen in the life of a nation, we somehow need to try and make sense of them. And it's very difficult to actually do that and respond appropriately when we're confronted with death on a huge scale. The amount of death and suffering in the Second World War is hard to imagine. 380,000 military people were killed and 67,000 civilians. These are numbers we can't really comprehend. It happens during war, death happens on a scale which is unimaginable. But at the same time, death happens, as it's been put, one by one. And somehow in our remembering and in our giving thanks, we need to honour both scales, both the greatness of the loss and the particularity of each individual death. Somehow we need to be present in both places. Of course we can't be, but God can and is. It's God who can hold together both the immensity and the minutiae. And that I think is one of the reasons why when we want to mark these occasions we gravitate towards church buildings because these are places in which God himself is honoured and has been worshipped and obeyed for so long. And the importance of buildings and the transformation and what they stand for it continues as much today as at any other time. 75 years ago when war ended one of the striking things that very day on the 8th of May was the way that London which had been under blackout was now illuminated. All those things which had been hidden were now brought to light. There was a genuine movement from darkness to light. And here to finish is an entry from a diary of a member of parliament who walked in central London that evening of the 8th of May 1945. The National Gallery was alive with every stone outlined in floodlighting and down there was Big Ben with a grin upon his illumined face. The statue of Nelson was picked out by a searchlight, and there was the smell of distant bonfires in the air. I walked to the temple and beyond, and then looking down Fleet Street one saw the best sight of all, the dome of St Paul's, rather dim lit, and then above it a concentration of searchlights upon the huge golden cross. What a wonderful transformation that this building, which for years had been hidden or tried to be hidden, was now illumined in all its glory. What a transformation from darkness to light and what a cause to give thanks for, as we do now this day in the words of this prayer. Lord God, our Father, we give you thanks for all those who gave their lives in the cause of freedom. We pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen.